heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you very much for this moment. Thank you for your unending blessings. Thank you that we're no longer slaves to fear. Dear God, help us to understand your word and also get close to you. Help us to see how much you love us and also show others your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Sabbath. Oh, we sound so asleep. What time is it? 11? Happy Sabbath. Sabbath on Ziza. Yeah, I lost you. It means Happy Sabbath in one of the languages I speak. So I say, Sabbath on Ziza, you say, Omusi umnezero. Okay, we're going to try it again. Umusi umnezero. Isawa tonziza. We're almost there. Isawa tonziza. Yes, that's that's about about right. But now you speak one more one more language than you spoke before coming here. So amen. Um, today's topic is deceptions. Deceptions. Um, let's read Romans 12, verse 2. It says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and perfect and acceptable. Deceptions, we see it everywhere. It doesn't take a scientist to know lying, deceiving has become a way of life. How many, how many scientists do you have in here? Anyone? Uh -huh. she's, um, she's Dr. Kerr, my psychology teacher. And I think taking her class, I've kind of understood more, a lot more about Maybe where lying may come from, maybe. Anyways. Um, I have a very simple question for everyone. Raise your hand if you've, if you've never lied before. Uh-huh. I just lied. <laughs> Anyways, basically, it's, it's just like it's so normal. Sometimes we lie unintentionally. Sometimes very, very intentional. I mean, everything is lying. Parents are lying to their parents. Parents are lying to their children. Children are lying to their parents. Uh-huh. Lying to your parents. Friends are lying to their friends. Most of all, we're lying to our best friend, Jesus. We, we go down in our room, we kneel down, we pray, and say, God, if you could just get me through this, if you could just help me go through it, I promise I give my life to you. He does it. He's a faithful God. He's, he's loving. He's caring for his children. He doesn't lie to us. You go through it, and then you forget about it. The promise you made, you don't fulfill it, which is basically a lie. Because you said, if, if you get me through this, I'll give my life to you. I will go to church more. I'll read your word. I will sing for you. Yet, you go through it. Nothing happens. You stay the same. We see it everywhere. It's, again, lying and deception. Uh -huh. I have another question. Raise your hand if you've cheated on your partner before. No, I'm joking. Don't raise your hand. 
But <laughs> yeah, so much can happen. You know, it's the same thing as as God and the church. You know, it represents what well, it represents. You know, woman and husband. We we, we represent the, the relationship. The relationship between the church and God. And, you know, when we cheat, we're kind of uh, lying, but also in the same way, we're in the same way, we're breaking the covenant of God, of that faithfulness, of that relationship with Him. Um, as you guys can tell by now, I don't sound like someone who's from here. I'm from a village, very, very far away from here. Like what? Can anyone guess? Yeah. It's about four days away. Four days away from here. Um, it's very, it's a place where there's no Wi-Fi, no running lights, no running water, no electricity, nothing like that. So we, um, where I lived, we had a little, uh, a little marketplace, a little store. People would come buy and sell, you know, they would buy stuff from us, you know, like selling and stuff. And then this one, this one time, my friend comes, not a friend, but you know, that other person who they're like your friend, but also you have to respect them because they're older than you and stuff. Yeah, they come and say, Moses, I mean, a tough situation. I don't know what my kids will eat tonight. I don't know what I'll eat tonight. So if I could get one kilogram of rice and maybe tomatoes and beans, and then I'll pay you later. I'll pay you when I have the money. That happens. I'm like, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Remember, the story is not mine. It's my parents. I'm like, you know, since you know my parents and stuff, yeah, go ahead. Take it. And then, boom. He takes it, days go by, day one goes, two, three, a week goes, a month goes, he still haven't came back to pay. And then he comes again, a month later, same thing. One kilogram of rice, tomatoes, and beans, and corn flour. I don't think most of us are used to it. It's called fufu, like we, you make it and it becomes like fufu. I don't know, maybe, maybe most of us don't know about it. But yeah, that happens. And again, he says, oh, I got you, I got you next time. I got you, like, I'll pay you tomorrow. I'll pay you this. I'm like, okay. He takes it. Another day comes, two, three, a month comes, and then we happen to meet somewhere. I'm like, over here? walk on my way to, you know, do my random stuff, what an African kid would be doing, not on their phone or anything like that. Just walking, and I see him, like, by the door. He sees me, we make eye contact. Then he swerves, like, he turns so that he can avoid me because he knows he has not paid what he owes me. He knows that he lied to me. He knows that he never paid. He never paid what he owes I mean, it's lying, it's deception, it's everywhere. And this one time, you know, things are very different from here back home in Uganda. Um, I'm over here, very, very hungry, you know. Mom cooked and we ate lunch and then she has leftover, leftovers for the younger ones. You know, I'm feeling so hungry, it's like 4 p.m. and I'm just, ah, I'm tired. My stomach is growling. Then, you know, I go, make sure no one is watching, go in the kitchen, bend down, you know, start eating all the food that was left, and then before I know it, I hear some footsteps and the door slamming. I turn, it's mom. She's like, what are you doing? I'm cooking. Um, he asked me again, she asked me again, what are you doing? Uh... I was looking at the ceiling. Little did I know that when I was in a rush eating the food, there was so much food left on my mouth. And I'm over here lying and f with food behind, my, behind my, uh, my hands, hiding my hands behind my back. She asked me again, what are you doing? 
I'm like, okay, fine. I was hungry and I had to eat. I had to get something to eat. I thought she, I thought she'd be merciful, but she tell me, tells me, lie down. She gets um, her sleeper. It's like, pa, pa. Don't you do it again? You are the oldest. You're supposed to know that if you get hungry, imagine how the younger ones are feeling right now. Again, I was lying. It's just lying. It's just lying. We get it from a young age. We come in this world. It's like normal. We've normalized it. And we forget to look at the one person or the one being that doesn't lie, that always fulfills his promises. God, yet we still lie to him. A uh, parent here will buy, um, will buy their kid a smartphone their very first uh, smartphone. No. They'll, be, they'll put restrictions and say, okay, by this time, your phone has to be up. By this time, you have to give me your phone. By this time, you have to be reading this. You know, all of that. You know, a kid will be like, yes, 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 yes. You know, the kid will go on the phone, and, you know, they'll sit in the living room doing whatever they do. And, you know, the kid will be taking selfies and stuff. You know, the parents will put restrictions to protect their children from um, getting hurt, from, uh, you know, getting exposed on, this, on social media and stuff. Some of us know how it goes. The par um, a parent asks, what are you doing on your phone? The kid has the phone over here. I'm reading the Bible. Who reads the Bible like this? On their smartphone, like this? I, just, I think they're taking selfies and stuff, you know? It's just like lying is just second nature, you know? It's just second nature. And because it's second nature, we are captured by lying. Lying is a sin. We've made sin second nature. I mean, what can we do? It is a sinful world anyways. Here are the most common, common deceptions. 2 Timothy um, chapter 3, verse 16 to 17 says, All scripture is given by, the, by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Um, lying is not a good work. If we read the Bible, you know, it's not a good work. But one of the common ones, one of the ones we're taught from kindergarten, elementary, middle school, high school, college, adult, you know, adult life. I don't know what that's like. But one of the ones we're really, really used to is follow your heart. Follow your heart. We hear it every single time. Follow your heart. Follow your heart. You'll be fine. Follow your heart. You'll be fine. Whatever your heart desires, you should be fine. Just follow it. Yet we forget what the Bible says, what Jesus says about following our heart, about our hearts, what Jesus says about our hearts. He says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's Jeremiah 17, verse 9. Follow your heart. From first grade, follow your heart. Follow your heart. It's, they don't tell us that our heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. They don't tell us the consequences of following our heart. If you ask me, the last time I followed my heart, oh boy, it didn't go well. <laughs> Let's just say it didn't go well, you know? Um, first, I got rejected. <laughs> cool. It's okay. It's okay. I still have Jesus. Jesus didn't reject me. It's okay. I got embarrassed, you know. We have to face it. I got heartbroken. I even got blocked. I couldn't see um, Couldn't see there. Um, their Instagram posts anymore, which I love seeing. I love stalking them, but then 
I followed my heart. My friend, um, my friend convinced me, and he was like, you know, Moses, do what your heart feels is right. He just forgot to tell me, Jeremiah 17, 9, my heart is wicked. My heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. You know, I got blocked, but in all of that, I got depressed and stuff, you know. It's normal. But there's one thing that if you follow him, if you follow just Jesus, if you follow Jesus, you're not going to get rejected, first of all, because there's no way someone would come from heaven and die for you. Then you follow him, then be like, mm -mm, don't follow me. Do not come behind me. There's no way that's going to happen. He gave your life for you. How is he possibly going to reject you? And second of all, you're not going to be embarrassed by following him. Well, maybe the world will make fun of you. Maybe the world will look at you as if you have no sense. You are just some random person walking. You're just like a nobody. But God, Jesus, recognizes it. When you, follow your, when you follow him instead of your heart, as a matter of fact, we're just glad Jesus doesn't use social media, you're not going to get blocked. You're not going to get blocked. You know, you'll still be able to read his word. You know, you'll still be able to follow him and stalk him through his word. Hey, I'll be happy to do that. You know, I don't get rejected. I don't get blocked. You know, all of that. And for the younger ones here, don't follow your heart. <laughs> don't, don't follow your heart. Ask your parents. They know how it went when they followed their heart. Maybe. But ask me, mm-mm. I'm not following my heart no more. And the second, um, the second lie that we hear all the time, all the time, from birth till death, be true to yourself. Be true to who? Myself? No, I, I can't be true to myself. I can't. Jesus said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Follow me. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That is Matthew 16, 24. You cannot be true to yourself and follow Jesus. If you are true to yourself, you will go with the ways of the world. You, when you see others, maybe your friends, are going left, you want to go with them because that's what you feel like doing. That's what you feel like is true. That's what you feel like is right. But Jesus doesn't say that you can go with, it, with them and then go with me. But he says... You have to deny yourself. You have to deny all your lust, all your desires within your heart to be able to go with him. And I promise you, you're not going to regret it. I promise you, you won't. Me, is if, I really, if I had so much time to tell you where I'm from, how, what living conditions I had, you wouldn't believe me. Really, you would not. From sleeping on the ground, on the ground, on the hard rock ground, to getting a mattress, to getting a bed, to going to school, well, going to school with a bus, with a car, from walking, what, five, ten miles to school, to driving to school, from not having books to write, now to have a laptop. Guys, I can type. All of that is from following Jesus. It's because there's no way you will be able to convince me that it happened by random chance. That I'm that all of that that I went through, it was just a random chance. Which is the same thing as for you. You know what you've been through. You know that there's no way in this world that you'll be able to go through whatever situation that you've been through without Jesus, yet the world is telling you to be true to yourself. 
If you're true to yourself, who's going to rescue you from those situations? If you're true to yourself, how will you overcome all the lies of this world? There is no way but Jesus. You know, there's a song that says, Why can't wash away my sins? But something by the blood of Jesus. Yeah, that one. There's no other way to live in this world without Jesus because you live in this world without him. You are lost. You are lost, you are captured by these lies when you're true to yourself. You're lying to yourself. And mostly you have to deny yourself. You have to, um, you have to deny your lust. You have to deny your wants and sometimes your friends if they're the reason you are apparently being true to yourself when the only person you should be true to is Jesus Christ. And living this world, we are very, very captured by, by sin. We are not free, like the song they just sang. We are not free. We are captured by fear, by, by deceptions, by lies. And the reason why we were at this point might have been because of lies. Who knows? If this, um, if so many things, if everywhere, if wherever you go, you just hear, be true to yourself, run, get away from there. It's just not worth it to be true to yourself and then lose eternal life, everlasting life with your loved one. It's not worth it. John chapter 8 verse 32 says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We're very captured by lies, but if we only know the truth, if we only know the truth, we'll be set free. Hey, I don't know if anyone here wants to say I'm not going to be a captive anymore. I want to know the truth through Christ so that I can be set free and see my gracious Savior. That's what I pray for everyone, to seek truth and be set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you very much for all you do for us. Thank you for the message. Thank you that we get to look to you for truth and not be deceived by this world. Please keep us safe in Jesus' name. Amen.